Hey guys, it's Art West, and today I'm gonna to be demonstrating how I test for abrasion resistance in fishing line. Um, this is a, an area of frustration uh, for me and maybe some others. It's very difficult to understand um, the industry's uh, perspective on abrasion resistance in terms of how they advertise it. You know, almost all brands say they, they're highly a, a abrasion resistant line but um, how do you know um, how that relates from one line to the next? Um, you typically hear information around that fluorocarbon is the most uh, resistant because it's the densest of materials. You tend to hear that braid has poor abrasion resistance, but most people don't know what that actually means relative to let's say monofilament in a practical way. Is it, is it half as it resistant? Is it you know only 20% worse? Uh, what is it? Um, so what I've done is I've tried to develop a mechanism to, you know, give a metric uh, for my own purposes uh, around abrasion resistance, and I thought I would share it uh, with the audience here. So what I've done is I've uh, repurposed a um, a spooling machine that allows you to put line on and take line off uh, of your reels. Um, it's a simple device that uh, allows you to. Um, put consistent pressure or cranking um, rotations, um, at least in this case, uh, from an abrasion um, dynamic. And so I have taken a empty spool and I've affixed 60, I'm sorry, 600 um, grain sandpaper in a single layer. Um, I have tightened it down. Um, there's a little waviness to you, to this, but um, the center spool is stable. These just bend a lot and under the kind of crank on the side, I wanna make sure that that stays affixed. So the basic idea is how long will the line survive um, being cranked against this sandpaper? And so for every rotation, that counts as one point. So the more rotations the line survives, the more points you get, and that's how I'm going to rate the line. So, um, the previous tests I've done do you show reasonable variability, uh, meaning um, it's not that consistent uh, like it would be for breaking strength. Um, but I thought it would just be interesting to show a variety of lines with a single sample. And I can do follow-up videos that will confirm right the abrasion resistance in multiple samples for any given, given line. But I thought it would be interesting to show kind of six different samples. And what I've done is I've got all six set up on a three pound weight. They're all of the same length. They all have a loop on the end. There's a bar here. I'll put the loop on the bar, the weight over the spool, and I'll start the rotations and start to calculate that. Okay. Um, to kind of help everyone out, I have produced this little table. You know, um, someday I'll figure out how to do it on the computer and embed that in the video. Um, but for now, this will do. So the six samples are listed here. Um, I did use braid, um, 80 pound um, threadlock Seaguar uh, line, uh, mostly because it had the same um, diameter as the rest of the line. And that um, it, uh, it's just interesting to understand the breaking strength of braid relative to fluorocarbon, relative to mono and otherwise, okay? So um, I'll put this back a little bit so I can read it and then kind of go over it with everyone. So um, you have the diameter, which is in millimeters. As you can see, um, they're all in the 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 range. So they're all roughly the same diameter. Um, the breaking strengths, uh, aside from the 80 pound, which breaks at 110 pounds, uh, the rest of the lines all break between 47 pounds and about 51, 52 pounds. They're all fairly uh, close knit into that 50 pound line class um, perspective. And then we have what I call stretch. Um, this is having put all of the samples on a digital force gauge um, and have used a sample of 44 inches long. This is how far the line stretched under 40 pounds of pressure. So they all had the same force. How much, how far did they stretch um, supplementally to that 44 inches? Um, and you see a, a really interesting distribution here. Everyone probably is aware that braided line has low stretch. 
And so in this case, uh, that 80 pound line stretched just about an inch. Um, but when you look at the fluorocarbon, it stretched five and a half inches, which is the most extreme of the six samples. And the remaining four, which are a combination of monofilament and copolymer monofilaments, right there are all around 275 to three, which is roughly half of the stretch of the fluorocarbon. So that's something I didn't actually anticipate that the fluorocarbon stretch would be uh, basically double, right, of the other one. So that's some fine, that's an interesting thing as, as preparing for this um, test that I've uncovered. So I thought I would note that. The last column, this is where I'll fill in the number of rotations that the line survives. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do it in the order of this, and then I'll write down and then I'll show this table at the end of the video. So the first one's going to be the braided line, the 80 pound thread lock. It's a 16 strand material. It's a great line from a braided line perspective. It's my favorite or one of my favorites. I like also like the Power Pro Hollow Ace. Um, all right, so I've got this now set. Uh, I already know what's gonna happen in all likelihood. Um, it's not gonna fare very well, but this is a time to kind of place your bets <laughs> on how many rotations with a three pound weight can line that breaks at 110 pounds sustain. So let's try it out. One, one, it's already broken. So I barely made it one rotation. I'm picking up the weight just for those concerned about my floor. Um, the, the weight drops on the pad first, but um, again, uh, one rotation. Is not great from an abrasion perspective, as you'll see with the other lines. Um, it's actually quite concerning if you fish uh, around structure um, that's not soft structure. You know, sometimes wooded um, situations where there's logs and things like that, uh, the braid does okay um, because the wood can kind of soften up, but rocks, it's gonna have a really hard time. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is the 40 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. Get it set up here. For this one, since it'll survive a little longer, I'll try to make sure I minimize the swing of the weight. Um, I'm not trying to influence it in any way. I'm just trying to keep the sway down. So here goes the 40 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon premier. One, two, three, four, five. Five. So, well, compared to the braid, right? You are five times better off with fluorocarbon. The consensus, I think I said in, earlier in the video, is that fluorocarbon has inherently the best chance at abrasion resistance because it's density in terms of how it's manufactured. Um, we'll find out. Um, I have done other tests and I have not found that to be the case, um, but we'll see how that uh, fares kind of going forward. So next is the 50 pound on day tournament line. So I've got it here, getting it on the gauge. And it's set up. And here we go, 50 pound on day tournament. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Hold on, gotta get the weight. So right away, right, that beat the fluorocarbon, which again, um, doesn't seem to match what is discussed um, on other forums and public sites describing fluorocarbon strength. Um, so, so far it's second to last <clears throat> and uh, the monofilament, pure monofilament beat it. So next is the 50 pound suffix IGFA key line. Got that here. I'm also making sure um, I have to recrimp this. Hold on a second. It came out and I don't want to stop the video. Bear with me. Sorry, everybody. Um, it wouldn't be worth to restart the whole video, at least for me. Um, so give me one second. I just didn't crimp it hard enough. Okay, we're good. I'll get it back on there. 
Okay, 50 pound suffix, IGFA, key line. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, might have been 14, let's just say 13. So, twice as high right, as the Ande, um, which might be surprising to some, it's not surprising to me. I've actually found that Ande is not very abrasion resistant. I think it's a pure monofilament, um, you know, um, not advertised as a copolymer. Copolymers tend to have an exterior that's different than the interior and the exterior tends to be more abrasion resistant. So um, it doesn't actually surprise me. So now let's go to the 40 pound suffix Tritanium Plus. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15. So that doesn't surprise me either. It's done quite well on other abrasion um, testing uh, samples that I've done in the past. So it is now the leader and we've got one left, which is the 50 pound Momoi High Catch IGFA. See if it can beat the 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen as well. So it tied the suffix Tritanium Plus. And I've got the table kind of updated here. So um, that's pretty interesting uh, results uh, that might surprise people with the, both the fluorocarbon stretch and the fluorocarbon's inherent abrasion weakness. Of course, it might surprise people that the um, 80 pound braid that has 110 pound breaking strength um, only survives one turn of the abrasion test and that we've got um, the copolymer uh, with the uh, suffix Tritanium Plus that survived 15 cranks and the Momai um, tied it as well. I've done other tests with the Momai at the 130 pound and it outlasted um, the Tritanium Plus. Um, so I think those two are just highly competitive with each other. Um, the only issue with the Tritanium is that if you're interested in Adhering to IGFA line class records, it does have um, variability from spool to spool and and, and intra spool. So, um, you know, just caution, caution there. I am, um, if I were to use in a, a line for IGFA purposes in the 50 pound class, uh, I would probably choose the Momai um, based on my um, testing and its consistency and the fact that at worst case it ties for number one in abrasion resistance. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys.